And I'm here to share a little bit more about Satellite Plugins, which is the newest plugin for Mixed in Key. What makes this plugin really cool is you can collaborate with anyone in any DAW. So I know the past year has been really challenging for musicians because not everyone's been able to get together in studios and groups like, like we always have. And Mixed in Key wanted to do something that was good for the musical community at this time. So we decided to create a plugin that would allow different producers to connect regardless of what DAW they're using. And I think the best thing about satellite plugins uh, is also that it's free. <laughs> So, very yes. cool collaboration tool. So let's actually start to use satellite sessions here. Dan's going to start off leading. Maybe Dan, if you want to sure. lead, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so and share your screen there. Sure. Let me share my screen real quick. The one cool thing about satellite plugins is it's not DAW specific. It just runs as an audio unit or VST, so anybody could use it in studio one pro tools logic ableton is obviously my personal favorite i just have a couple tracks i just started a little idea and i created a new track a midi track and i threw satellite sessions um satellite sessions is its own plugin so there's three types of plugins we have satellite sessions midi and audio so i threw sessions onto its own midi track and then when you open it up for the first time it's going to it's going to ask you to create a session or join a session and actually, Sarah, do you mind if we just start over from that process real quick and just kind of walk them through that? Yes, absolutely. Let's do that. So I'm just going to load this onto a blank MIDI track and we've got sessions and this is what it looks like. So I'm going to say I'm going to either join a session. So if somebody else started one and you want to jump on their session, you do that or you can create your own. I already created a new session and basically it's really easy. Uh, I create a new session and, and we're going to produce an F minor. I'm going to create a session. It's going to connect to a new session, do its little scrolly bar thing. And then I'm going to go to invite and I'm going to type in Sarah, Sarah's email. Actually, I could also do a, a link invite, can't I, Sarah? You actually have to invite me by email okay. unless you want to make the session public. Yeah, so I invited Sarah. So she's going to go to her email and she's just going to uh, find, it's going to give her a code. She'll just copy and paste that code into um, the session when she joins she's going to load and do the same thing i just did loading a sessions on a midi track and then it will bring her into the same view that we're looking at now so this is basically like its own doll in the cloud sarah just shared her screen so i'm going to open up a copy of satellite sessions and i'm going to be joining a session here and here's my invite id that dan sent me so i'll press join the session so now i'm connected to the session and I can see exactly what Dan can see, which is, so let's add some tracks, Dan. Do it. Do you want to start? Yeah, I will start here. So I'm going to add in just a little idea that I was working on here. So there's a little bit of a groove. So I'm going to start with this kick drum here. I'm just going to solo out this kick. And actually, I'll just, it's a pretty big kick. I'll just um, give everyone a couple tips on how I made this kick. I'm using a, a fab filter on it. And this kick is in the key of F. So what I've done here is I looked up the, um, the frequency here of what F is. And I've done a, a just a brick wall EQ and also a little boost at the fundamental frequency. And then I just carved off some of the high end so my kick's a little bit deeper there sounds my, thick it's nice it's a it's a big kick there's also another process i did to actually get it to the stage before i did any eq or reverb but that's for another day so i'm gonna call this uh kick one so that's an audio satellite audio plugin right satellite audio yeah i just added here and i want to make sure that capture audio is enabled and now I'm going to go back to satellite sessions here. Just unmute my track here. And you can see my kick one here is enabled. And I'm going to just play my track there. And satellite is capturing my kick. Okay, there we go. So nice little 
eight bar loop there. And I went a little bit over, so I can do some very basic editing in satellite. I'm just gonna edit out this tail part there. So I just have a nice tight little eight bar loop. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah. do you want me to jump in and add some stuff now? Yes, for sure. That'd be great. Awesome. Cool. So I'm gonna take over, you should be able to see my screen. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add like a nice little shaker sound. I'm a sucker for a good shaker. So just a little basic, nothing fancy. I'm just gonna throw that in there on top of the kick and maybe we'll add some more boots and cats and things. Just gonna grab satellite audio, same thing Sarah did, just throw it on. And then I'm gonna just rename it shaker right here. So it just populates automatically in satellite sessions. And uh, capture audio is good. So I'm gonna go back to here um, and in the satellite session, Sarah, I don't see that kick that you uploaded. Did you do it in the in the the mixing key with Dan session, or were you in a different session? We were jamming out in a few different sessions, so that's what I'm wondering. Which is kind of cool. Like you could have multiple sessions if you want to work on different projects with people. Like no, nope. Dan, I'm in the wrong session. Uh, there, there it is. That's Sorry. cool. No, it's all good. Well, I'm it was confusing because it was still you in the session. So well, this is a great lesson to people. If you have multiple tracks you're working on with somebody, now you know you can do that. So I'm just gonna hit record. I'm just gonna hit. I'm all I have to do is hit space bar, and because this is enabled, we got a beautiful shaker. I'm gonna let that go for eight bars. It's a great shaker. Sounds good. I'm just gonna chop that little guy off. Uh, awesome. I'm actually going to add those bells, Sarah, because I know it fits with what we had. So I'm just going to add like this little bells loop that I had. I'm going to just add another audio. This bells glass. I just affected it with the, it's, uh, an OTT, little EQ, echo, and this satellite audio. So I'm going to call this bells. And then Sarah, you can maybe upload your kick and maybe some other things as well. Maybe not just the kick. You can maybe show people that you can play it. You can record multiple things to the master as well. Could be cool. Go back to satellite sessions. We got the bells track. It just automatically recognized it here. So now we should have this recording. Pretty bells. Thank you. I worked very hard on them. So yeah, this got my pretty little bells and now Sarah can jump in there and add away. So I'm going to just share my screen here so everyone can see. Okay, so I'm going to record actually both kick parts. Taking Dan out of his element today is an effort <laughs> to make some, oopsie, I deleted my kick drum, some down tempo stuff usually, but today yeah. we have, you gotta stretch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for helping me get out of my element, Sarah. Appreciate when it. When you work with someone else, you know, it's about making something totally new. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm gonna add in bo uh, both of these tracks here. Let's just go over to satellite sessions. And I'll just show everyone here that you can also rename things in satellite. And if these kicks are too overpowering once I record them, then I can also take the volume up and down. These are volume sliders. Okay. This is supposed to be kick one. So back to satellite sessions. Back to recording. Okay, cool. So I have my two kicks recorded in here. I'm just going to delete these other tracks. If you need to delete a track, you can just right click on it and delete. And let's just label these. And Dan, if you like, you can actually start to drag in some of the audio that I've recorded into your session, or I could drag in the audio that 
um, Dan has contributed here into my session. So, yeah, do you want to show that? That'd be great. Yeah. So I'm going to create couple audio tracks here. Okay, so I just created this audio track. And if I go over to satellite sessions here, I can just take these tracks here and I can drag this region right into my DAW. So that now I have audio tracks. I have Dan's audio tracks, shakers, bells, and there we go. Now, let me show you, you can also record some MIDI into satellite sessions as well, which is pretty cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll down a little bit further in my track here. And I have some chords here, some like Detroit style chords. Also, my sub bass is playing on my track visual Y. Um, so I wanted to uh, to make some chords in Captain Chords, which is another plugin from Mixed in Key here, that will complement these chords and kind of sit underneath the other chords there. So for those of you who are not familiar with Captain Chords, Captain Chords is from Captain Plugins, which is an award-winning series of plugins. And these plugins connect together so you can write the chords, the melodies, and the bass lines all in the same key. So I just have a very simple chord progression. And actually, I probably have time to show you how I made this here. So why don't I just start from scratch here? I can open up my plugin here right inside Captain Chords, which is pretty cool. So I just have Massive, which is an older plugin, but you can still use it to make some, some really cool sounds. So I made these Detroit style chords here. And to add in some new chords, you just have to press this plus button here. So I'm going to add in a bunch of F minors. I know, very original. It does, it does sound pretty good, though. And then I'm going to make this last one here maybe the first inversion of the chord. So that takes the bass note, and it puts it on top. And let me make this. I'll just, I create that F there. You can edit your MIDI here. So let's solo this as well. Just bring up the level there so we can hear what's going on. Okay, so let's get a rhythm going on here. So these are different rhythms that are inside Captain Chords here. And let's go to this French rhythm. But I'm going to make it a little bit simpler. And I'm just going to just take out some of these last rhythms so there's a simpler pattern. Okay. So there is my, my... I have a quick question, Sarah, if you don't mind. Yeah. Is there, any, is there any integration between Captain Chords and Sessions as far as the transferring the MIDI or just the sounds and the patches, or are they completely separate still at this point? That's a great question. It would be really cool if you could directly transfer the MIDI from Captain Chords into uh, satellite plugins, mm -hmm. but uh, we don't have that capability right now, but that is a very cool and very futuristic idea. Uh, yeah. Well, so, I, I would love to be able to, I know we've got some questions probably on the sessions. If we could yeah. uh, show maybe how to drag maybe my bell sounds and things into the project. Um, and sure. maybe go back I to just, some session stuff. Yeah, I just want to show everybody how we uh, actually get the MIDI. Into, oh, yeah. That's what I was yeah, getting totally. to here. Totally. <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm going to do here is I've just dragged out this clip to my DAW here. Okay, and uh, let's just make this into, I want to make sure it's looped there. And then I can drag out. Okay, and then I'm going to copy the MIDI. I can't actually have Captain Chords and, um, uh, uh, and Satellite MIDI on the same track. 
So what I need to do here is I'm going to put a satellite audio to record these chords in, in case Dan would like the chords there. So we'll call this Captain Chords. And then on this one below here, I'm going to put a satellite MIDI. So I'm going to be able to record in, and we're just going to call this CC MIDI. So we can record in the chords, that way someone else can actually have these MIDI chords and Maybe Dan wants to make a different sound with them. So let's unsort all this stuff here. And we'll go back to satellite sessions here. And we have Captain Chords and the CC MIDI. So here we go. So there we go. So it just takes a second for them to upload. And uh, now Dan should be able to see my chords and my MIDI. Uh, but no, I think it's really cool. It literally didn't take more than five seconds for it to upload from her session and her doll into mine. And I have everything here that she just recorded. It's like we're working in the same doll in different locations. I mean, we're pretty far away from each other. and. It's a really cool collaboration platform I think we have here. So if I wanted to take the the notes that she programmed in Captain Chords, I can just click to drag this straight into a new MIDI clip here in Ableton Live. Now you can see I've got all the sounds. I've got everything I want. I could swap that out with any other Ableton Live instrument or plugin and then keep producing that way. It's a really cool, really cool project. And as far as Are like, you... go ahead. I was going to say, uh, sorry, I didn't mention trick there. If you oh, click good. on the little keyboard, you can actually bring up different sounds that you can play back the MIDI with. Yep. Exactly. So playback is off right now, but if you turn that on, then you could play maybe with the heaven clock. Okay. Yeah. Let's see what that sounds like. Oh, this might be one thing worth mentioning too, Sarah. Um, if I'm playing sounds in Ableton Live, there is a setting here in set in, uh, settings where you can choose mute playback through my satellite audio plugins while listening to recorded stems in satellite session, which is nice because um, that way we don't hear double of stuff. We're not getting confused between satellite sessions and Ableton. So I thought, I don't know if we mentioned that yet, but I think that's important. It's yeah. A good yeah, it's a good feature to take note of. Yeah, and then, so yeah, like you said, the heaven pluck, we've got some built-in sounds. And let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, we're writing Grammys here, honestly. <laughs> no, nobody copyright this, don't, don't rip the audio because we're gonna make millions. No, this is cool though, this is a nice little bop. Yeah, any other thoughts on that, Sarah? or anything else you want to share? Well, maybe you can just show everyone uh, just how you can drag in some of the other audio. Yeah, totally. And so I'm gonna actually switch from session view in Ableton to arrangement view, because that's typically where most of our time is gonna live producing. Is there an option to actually highlight all of these at the same time? No, right now it's just track by track. Okay, awesome. So yeah, I could just go track by track. I've already got these, the shaker and bells. You can see that I've already produced. I'm just dragging everything else. It's pretty easy. Go back to the sessions. Same thing here. Just keep dragging that in basically until everything is. We could always shut down the session, you know, if we got tired of working on it today and come back to it tomorrow or later on. And both of us could rejoin the same session using the same invite ID. So mm -hmm. it's not just a a one time a one time session. You can you can return to it later, which I think uh, that's valuable to do for collaborations, right? Sometimes not everything happens in one session. Yeah, definitely. Did you want to take questions, and, or was there other things you wanted to share, Sarah? Well, just before we take questions, I think one thing worth mentioning as well is that because we both have uh, equal hosting permissions. Either person can edit or delete any of the audio that has been recorded into satellite sessions. So if Dan wanted, 
you know, if he didn't like the way that I played any of my tracks, you know, he thought I could have done the piano better. <laughs> you know, he can delete my tracks and say, you know, let's try that again. One more take. So, yeah. Yeah. Although I did love your takes, Sarah. I thought they were great. So no, thanks. I'll, I would be happy to keep them. But yeah. And I mean, and also, like you said, you can highlight certain sections. Maybe I didn't, maybe I wanted a break here or at the end for this last section, I can just highlight that amount of time and just delete it. And it just, it deletes to the grid. Yeah. yeah let's, let's take some questions from, um, from the live producers online crew. For sure. But yeah. If you guys have questions, go ahead and post them in the chat right now, or feel free to unmute yourself. It's pretty casual. Feel free to jump in. Oh, thanks so much for doing this. What's up, Robbie? Yeah. How you doing? It's good, man. Thanks for joining. I actually tested this for the first time with Robbie a long time ago for about 10 minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a fun time. It's a fun Boys. time. I like it. Yeah, thanks again. Love this. And I was just confirming the, the workflow of this is kind of to pair it with, uh, with a software like Zoom or something for talking so you don't have to worry about sending a microphone within satellite sessions. Yeah, I mean, I think the collaboration aspect does work nicely with Zoom because then you can talk to the other person that you're collaborating with, right? Absolutely. And it's the, it's the next best thing to actually being in sessions. Um, when we were building this, we considered like putting in like a chat function so you could write to the other person that you were writing music with. But I think uh, Mixing Keys just thought that using something like Zoom would be easiest, right? Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah, it's great. I really like it. Yeah, I've tried some other th things in competition, which is hilarious because yours is free. But Pedal does like a five dollar a month membership, and they would, um, yeah, they would try to they would try to kind of make the audio be synced in. Do you happen to know if anything exists that you can actually kind of play with the drummer, or is that more of like a two thousand twenty five thing? Like I I've tested, I was with a drummer in with using satellite plugins and we tried having them clap on beat four. It was like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And it's like a little bit off in both pedal and this, but do you happen to know if anything exists in 2021 where people can kind of play in real time or is it more like sending audio and MIDI is the wave for now? Where you can play in real time, like without any latency? Yeah, or like least amount of latency in current day. Well, I mean, I think Satellite Plugins has very, very low latency. You can record in something in real time, and it's it's almost it, like it's gonna it's gonna capture it pretty well. So nice. I would, yeah, I would try this out, and I think what know, Robbie see what you think. Yeah, sorry, Absolutely. didn't mean to cut you off, Sarah. I think what Robbie's looking for is something more like um, like a Jam Kazam type of thing. Uh, there was a newer one that came out in twenty twenty that worked but it's you have to do a lot of crazy routing and i think the cool thing about plugins it's not trying to make it so that you're all in the same room playing real time and everything's being heard as if like there was zero latency it's more of a collaboration tool that okay. is just like real time like hey let's actually jam together and then i'll send you what i have without having to go the whole dropbox route or we transferring files it's like super inconvenient sometimes which i love that about this is it it's as if we could jump on the phone with a friend and producer and it's like we're staring at the same screen kind of in a sense but if i was recording audio if you're wanting to be able to record and jam with me in real time at the same time this isn't really built for that i think as much as it is just like a collaboration tool for me sending you my idea in real time rather than actually playing together at the exact same time on top of each other. But maybe that'll come down the road, you know, who knows? I don't, for me, I don't know if I need that. Cause in the end of the day, I'm just producing a track with a friend, mm -hmm. letting him do his thing. And then I go, we just go back and forth. Yeah. Very I cool. think also your idea, Robbie would be dependent on the speed of both person's internet connection as well. Cause if you want to play in real time with someone who's, somewhere else that's only ever really going to be as accurate as like your internet connection is do you know what i mean yeah because yeah. if you have like a slow internet like that's going to take some time to crunch things along right so absolutely absolutely yeah it can currently work for like yoga music with like long droning pads going <laughs> back and forth <laughs> but not like uh not like syncopated funk Maybe maybe in five years, but this this plugin is awesome for sending sending ideas back and forth really quick. So 
appreciate your help with this. Hey, my pleasure. Yeah. I mean, definitely download it. Like you can't lose. It's free. Eventually we will go to a, a different, um, like a, a tiered system where there's going to be some sort of paid component to it, but we're always going to have a free component as well. So people can keep on collaborating. That's amazing. You know, yeah. Very cool. No matter, no matter what your financial situation, right? We don't want that to limit who you can work with. That's a good question. Okay. Yes, Might I we ask have a question? question. Yeah. What's up, Mike? Uh, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Cool project. Cool product. I think it's neat. Um, I guess you guys had practiced a little bit before and you sort of had a kick and uh, bells and all that stuff. But if you're starting with from scratch with somebody, I'm wondering what the process is then. So you, you already had some stuff. So like, um, it's the idea that maybe one person uploads a kick and then the other person listens back and then drags it into their DAW and then says, okay, well, I'm going to play with this for a bit and then, because it could, it's more complex than just a kick. So maybe it's a, a whole solo or something like that. So you take it onto your side and then you kind of noodle around with it, figure out what you want to do and then upload it to the, to the session. And then they drag that into their DAW and then they kind of go offline and noodle around with it and come up with their part. Like the real time work collaboration. What's, is, is that the intention that it's sort of just like a palette in the cloud? Yeah, I think your question a little bit depends on like, what is your collaboration process with another person? What's your writing process? Like, what would it be like if you two were together? Would one person put down a kick? Would you prefer to start playing a melody on a keyboard? Do you get ideas just like humming and singing something? You know, because you can't say there's like one way to do things. You know, how do you write a song? It's different every time, right? And it's also different depending on who you're working with because when you write a song with Dan, that process is going to be totally different than if you're writing with with um, with Jeff. Like just the way the each individual works is very different. So, you know, you might get a bunch of ideas together and you could see sat the Satellite Sessions plugin is just like a canvas where you put everything. And at the end of the session, maybe both people drag things into their session and start to assemble a master audio session. Or you could delegate one person to be in charge of all the stems and they have to do the arrangement and the mixing or maybe just the arrangement part in their session. So I think the possibilities are endless on, on how you want to work. And we don't want to define what an artist workflow should be. That's that's totally up to you. This is just a palette that allows two people, two or more people to connect and to make something new together. Yeah, yeah. And to build off of what Sarah just said, uh, for me personally, Mike, my, my workflow and experience using this, uh, I can see myself using it the most with my bandmates uh, who play saxophone and keys. So what I would probably do is I would send them a full bounce out of Ableton, maybe out of a song that I produced and it's like 40 or 50% done, right? And I would just send it to them and be like, hey, come up with a solo or a part and then let's jump online and we'll, um, we'll actually, I'll have them share with me what they came up with. And then I could tell them, be like, yo, I actually not really feeling that. Let's try it a little bit different this way. Then they can play it again and upload it. I'm like, okay, well, what if you did this a little different? You know, just like 16 bar chunks at a time. And then they can just send that to me real time. I can coach them through it. And I can just drop that, drop that straight into my session. It prevents us having to email and share files and go back and forth through Dropbox or whatever. So I see, I see that as the biggest value add for me personally. Like Sarah was saying, everybody has different workflows or different use cases. You could totally obviously start a song from scratch with somebody and jam out for 16 bars and then move on. But for me, that's, that's how I would use it. Mostly remote collaboration, hitting up give them the bounce or an idea of what it sounds like beforehand, let them come up with ideas. We jump online and then I tweak it with them. That's kind of what yeah. I would see. Yeah. It's really a great songwriting tool. You know, if you're a producer and you want to get a musician on in the session, right? A guitar player or a bass player or a piano player, you know, you could have most of the track produced and just get them to add in a part mm -hmm. or it's great too. you know, if you work with vocalists, right? Like sometimes to work together to, uh, to really write that top line, you know, is, is um, 
is really valuable having the input of two people and it's a lot easier i think having the artist kind of sing along while you're there maybe coaching them or guiding them right as a producer so there's a bunch of ways you can use this too um you could even use it with like if you're a mix engineer with mix clients right if you have a mix maybe 85 percent 90 percent of the way done you could be playing it and having someone kind of sit in on your your mix session and then if they want to make a change you know you could make a little change and people could be kind of listening in like as you're working so it's pretty flexible good question yeah thanks man does anybody else have any questions or thoughts that you guys want to share before we have to hop off i know sarah and i we have we have another meeting and things that we have to we have to get done but Thank you everybody for coming and hanging out. Um, any last minute questions, feel free to jump on and now is your chance. Yeah, so no? I say th thanks again, appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you, Sarah, for real. Appreciate oh, you. My pleasure. Well, yeah. thank you to everyone, you know, for coming out today and and I hope this ends up being something that's that's useful for people. I know I'll definitely use it. And we'll talk about the, uh, copyrights and royalties for the song we just made Sarah later. So when we're selling, mil <laughs> selling millions of hits with it, it'll be great. Yeah. Wow. Cool. If you want to sell, sell millions. I think you have to get into this NFT stuff that's just come out, but yeah, that's for the next <laughs> webinar. Okay? Next webinar is on NFTs, everybody with mixed in Kate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'd love to learn more about that actually. Cool. Thanks again to Mixing Key and Sarah for donating their time to hang out with us. Okay, thanks so much, guys. Yeah. Take care. Thanks, Robbie. Ciao, ciao. Thanks, Sarah. I'll see you guys later. Thank you. Peace. Thanks.